you dead. In 1990, the smash hit Poison was the debut single from a trio of R&B artists who had already achieved megastar status as members of the group New Edition. Ricky Bell, Michael Bivens, and Ronnie DeVoe were on off on their own with the group Bell Biv DeVoe, which went on to not only take over the charts in the 90s, but influence pop culture and pop music forever. They're in town for a sold out concert at Wintrust Arena with some other huge R&B names from the 80s and 90s, and they join us this morning. Good morning, guys. Great to talk to you. Hey, good, good morning. Morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, Chicago. I tell you, good I hear morning. poison, and poison's in my head for like a week now. Um, you guys kind of established almost a new sound. Did you set out to do that? Uh, how did that come about? Well, we, we set out. We set out to learn this new technology. We had three lead singers on the phone, so our answers are going to crash. So maybe you go first, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, as you know, being with New Edition, our, our background was primarily in R and B. But we love hip hop music, you know, that's what we listened to when we went to parties, drove in our car, we was listening to a lot of Run DMC, Grandmaster Flash, Public Enemy. So when it came time for Bell Biv DeVoe, we just knew we wanted to dance. We knew we wanted to have a hip hop foundation, but we wanted to put the R&B melodies on top of it. Yes. And there comes Poison. So, you know, when we put our, our songs together, we're always thinking about the club, or how it's going to come across on stage. So we knew we just wanted to dance, be high energy, but also sing on top of it, put the melodies on. So, uh, Ronnie, when you guys grew up in a, in a pretty rough area of Roxbury, when New Edition hit it big, how did that impact your, your lives? Oh, it took us um, damn near straight out of hell to a certain extent, right? Um, like you said, we come from the mean streets of Boston, Massachusetts, in the middle of a crack epidemic and all of the things that could potentially go wrong as far as the traps that are set for people to fall in. Uh, we were blessed and able to navigate and pull our families out of the projects and mo moms and aunts and uncles and really just... Um, kind of um, be an inspiration, not only for the people there in Boston, for people across the country. Like for us as New Edition, it felt like, yo, that they, Mike looks like my cousin or Ronnie looks like my nephew or what have you. So people across the nation and across the world were able to identify with those five kids from Roxbury. Yeah south in uh, Massachusetts. So Michael, though that you guys are going through this, <laughs> you know, you're still maturing, your kids, you're, you know, 12, 13, 14. Did that present any issues? No, because see, the good thing about growing up in the projects is you learn the game faster, you learn the game raw. So you, you learn from others, you see people get arrested. You see people put on a nice clean suit and go to a nine to five. You appreciate a hot dog and some pork and beans for dinner. There's a lot of appreciation in the product. So for us, we felt like when we got in the music business and we was in hotels, that was like luxury living for us. So we were happy, you know, we, we felt good to get on the plane and, and get that little thing that they give you. To, back then when they called them stewardess, now they call them flight attendants. So what, what people think about was it too much for us? Were we too young for us? The Orchard Park Project and Cathedral Project, it prepared us for the business. That's why when people saw us, it looked like we was doing this for a long time. We had yeah. a great teacher in Brooke Payne who prepared us, man. And unfortunately, a lot of these artists today, if they could have the artist development that we had, we would have a lot more people who would be stars yeah. as opposed to celebrities. Yeah. Ricky, you guys have some good, good uh, fan stories. I, I bet o over the years. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. It was some, some amazing, I mean, just about everything, stuff you can't write from um, women posing as maids or room <laughs> service to, <laughs> to get up in the room to, to moms and daughters following us across the country, panties on stage, bras on stage. Even someone threw a telephone on stage one time when we went into the song, Mr. Telephone Man. Mr. Telephone Man, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, the phones were big in those days, man. That could have killed you. Exactly. This, yeah. is, this, was, this was a house phone. It wasn't even a cell phone. And it still had the cord attached to it, right? Exactly. <laughs>
What a <laughs> How many times a day do people at these shows go, Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike? I mean, it's just kind of. Oh, my God. Right? It's, it's, it's insane. It's insane. I mean, we make sure when we get to that part of the show, we just stop all the music, the DJ stops, and we just let the crowd just sing it aloud by themselves. And it's yeah. wild because uh, for us, it's amazing. The new edition story that came out in 2017, uh, not only do we have a core audience that is our age bracket, but we have generations at our concerts now. I mean, we see kids, you know, five, uh, nine, 13 years of age at Bell Biv DeVoe shows. And we can't wait to get back to that new edition thing as well so those same individuals can show up. But right now, we're rocking as BBD and we can't wait to hit Chicago. We're excited. The lineup is impeccable. And uh, we're doing our stretches and all of the above now. So we're <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, Hold you're on. in your car. Are you driving to Chicago? <laughs> yeah, it is. This, this, this is your producer and all of your headsets. This is Mike Bivens. Um, we need to go to when the Chicago Sky won the championship. Okay, here we go. Now. <laughs> Well, I'm in my car. I wanted to do that. I always want to be a producer in the headset, so forgive me. But <laughs> the, point I'm, the point I'm making is we get to do a sold-out show 2021 in an arena that's experienced a championship. What better concert yeah. to follow up to be in Chicago and to be doing this, what is it, 31 years? Unreal. 31 years Unreal. later, we can Unreal. actually say we can come to Chi-Town and sell it out. This is incredible. And to be on a long-running radio TV station, WGN-TV. Yeah, that's Let's right. give it up for that's WGN. Right. I just right. love energy that you guys... Up. Let's raise the energy. <laughs> raise the energy. Uh, I love that you guys all seem to really still like each other. <laughs> Oh, my God, yes, absolutely. Only on the interviews, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck with the show. It is so great to talk to you guys. The concert is at the Wintrust Arena. It's sold out, but maybe you can yeah, buy tickets. Yeah, but hang outside and bring your telephones. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Look at that picture. Sold out. Uh, I'll see you guys in Roxbury. Let's we'll see you. Raise it up. Raise it up. Raise it up. <laughs>